Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and today we need to talk about roundabouts. After posting my smooth roundabout video, I received a, the normal influx of positive and negative comments, critiques on the video, that kind of thing. But there was also this subsection of comments of people who seemed confused about roundabouts or how they function, how they work, who has to yield, how many lanes they can operate with, how lanes change during a roundabout. All, all manner of confusion and misinformation was in that comment section, and today I'd like to take this time to understand a few different types of roundabouts and how they work in city skylines, and possibly how they work in reality as well. Everybody, thanks for being here. Let's talk about roundabouts. The first roundabout I want to describe is very, very simple. It's just a one-lane, low-density, standard roundabout. I'm going to be using three units by three unit curves for this as it's lower density and you shouldn't need to make it too much larger than this. If you feel you need to make it larger then maybe one of the larger models would be better for you. And I'm just gonna use two lane roads coming off the sides of this. Very simple. Cool. Uh, the way you actually set this up and add the correct yields and uh, other <laughs> traffic manager elements is go to traffic manager, click on the priority signs button, hold shift and control while hovering the roundabout and give it a click. And that will automatically set up the necessary uh, options for the roundabout. Mainly, it's not just this, but mainly it sets up yields on all sides, which is a common theme among all roundabouts that don't use traffic lights. And one other thing you can do to this to make it a little bit nicer and a little bit smoother might be to increase the the uh, offset using node controller on all sides for this one i'm going to be going up to 12 you might you might be able to get away with a little more or a little bit less but 12 is fine for me and once again this is a low density roundabout the benefit being that you don't need a a lighted intersection for sure you should not use a light as a replacement for this because it's just a low density situation this would more likely replace a four-way stop or maybe a priority road with a yield for incoming traffic on the non-priority road. Another benefit of this thing is that traffic can turn around on it. So if you have a situation where you need traffic to be able to make a U-turn, this can be a great option. In real life, you can use this to, to turn around as well. Uh, though it may not be ideal in higher density situations, it's great for a low density, low conflict option. The second option I'd like to share with you is a two-lane roundabout, which is a slightly higher density, or not even slightly, I would say a much higher density option than the one-lane low-density roundabout. But this amounts to maybe a medium density roundabout. So I'm using a two-lane turbo roundabout road. You, you can use the vanilla two-lane road if you want to, but I do recommend, no matter what road you use for the circle, I would recommend using four-lane road in this type of configuration so that you can have two lanes entering and exiting the roundabout at all times. Uh, so this one could be set up several different ways. I think the best way in city skylines is to do the same thing. So click, uh, in the last example, we clicked on traffic manager, priority signs, hold shift, hold control, click the roundabout. And what that really does, actually, let me, uh, let me throw in some markings and share with you what that does to the roundabout. With markings, I think it paints a much more obvious picture what's going on with the two-lane roundabout. As far as what drivers are allowed to do in this one, the right lane forces you to make a right-hand turn. You still have to yield at this point because traffic in the roundabout still has right-of-way and may change lanes at this point, so they're still yielding. It's not a dedicated lane, but it is a conflict reduction when compared to the one-lane roundabout. So the right lane is your right-hand turn. The left lane is everywhere else. They are allowed to change lanes at any node. So if they wanted to go straight across, they would enter the roundabout in the left lane, be on the inside, change lanes at the next node, as uh, denoted by this dotted line here, They can, or the dashed line. They can come across, change lanes, and exit. That's fine. This traffic will have to yield to them. They can stay in the, in the innermost lane if they want to, and change lanes across the way here, across from where they entered. Then they can leave the roundabout making a left-hand turn if they want to, or they could stay in one longer, start in the left lane, 
stay in the left lane, stay in the left lane again, or the innermost lane again, and change here, netting them a U-turn, netting them a complete 180. This is higher capacity when compared to the one lane roundabout, though it is not a, a full conflict-free roundabout like the turbo, which is what we're going to go over next. And now it is time for our high capacity roundabout option. This is going to be a turbo roundabout using the turbo roundabout road pack from the Steam Workshop, though you can build this with any three lane one way network. So a three lane highway can work OK, but if you have the option, I'd recommend using the Steam Workshop to download a better network, probably. For this one, I recommend having three lanes into the roundabout. So I'm going to use a six lane road. It doesn't really matter which network you pick as long as there's three lanes coming in. And I'll be able to illustrate why in just a moment. So all the cardinal directions done. Just like the other roundabouts we've done, I'm going to click on traffic manager, priority signs, hold shift, hold control, click the circle, and that will automatically set up your yields and all other necessary uh, traffic manager functions. On all of these, you can you can always toggle some or change the length of the nodes to create a different offset. For this one, I suppose I'd do about 14, but maybe reduce the incoming road to about 10. I think that's probably a good luck. Uh, good look. So put them all to 14, down to 10. This will de uh, depend heavily on the networks that you choose to use, because different roads, even if they have the same lane count, the textures will vary from network to network. But I think that's a real solid way for the networks that I've chosen. Let me uh, mark this up to better visualize what's going on and I'll show you how it works. And here is our completed turbo roundabout. One thing that you must do to ensure functionality is make sure to go into Traffic Manager and connect these two lanes. So the two innermost lanes must move to the middle and outermost lane every time. Some of you may be thinking that that would force cars to not be able to come all the way around in the roundabout, and that is actually completely correct. Uh, the turbo roundabout does not allow you to make a U-turn in it, and that further reduces conflict. It's a really good thing. So to go over the, the intersection with the markings built in, you're basically picking your lane as you approach the roundabout, and if you're in the rightmost lane, you yield. All of these will have to yield before entering because these cars will have right of way. But once you've got an opening, if you're in the right lane, you'll be forced to go right. If you're in the middle lane, you will be forced to go straight across. So that'll put you, the middle lane will put you into the outer lane, which will force you to exit. Or if you're in the innermost lane, you yield, come in, you change lanes once. The fin here denotes that. So the fins are the telltale of the turbo roundabout. The innermost lane is forced to the middle lane, is forced to the outer lane, which then forces you to exit. And there's no scenario where a vehicle could do a U-turn in this, but that further reduces the conflict in the thing and keeps cars from going round and round. Uh, to illustrate this, you can take a bus lane and I'll, I'll show you. Uh, start a bus lane there. If you want to go right, this will tell you what, what lane you have to pick. So the outermost lane, the rightmost lane, will force you to go right. The center lane will allow you to go across. And the leftmost lane will get you uh, to, go, to go left here. And you can see vehicles in city skylines cannot change lanes during a segment. So these are each of the cardinal directions has a node. Those are the only points where you're allowed to change lanes. So you'll see that they change lanes just as the lines show, just as the markings show. They change lanes at those nodes, at those entrances to the roundabout. So lane change, lane change, left turn. Uh, there may be other variants of this. Perhaps I'll go into that as well. But this is generally the design that people are, are supporting when they say that roundabouts are the superior traffic uh, intersection option. I see your turbo roundabout, and I raise you a super turbo roundabout. If you thought the turbo roundabout was a bit of a silly name, I agree, but it's about to get slightly sillier with what I'm going to call the super turbo roundabout. This one has the advantage of a dedicated right-hand turn lane that does not have to yield. So the rightmost traffic, as denoted by the markings, can 
enter and exit conflict-free. The other two lanes do the same exact thing into this four-lane roundabout. That's the secret to this one. The middle lane will go up and change lanes and cross. The leftmost lane will change lanes here, change lanes across, and then be forced to exit on the other side. But each of these sides have a dedicated right-hand turn lane, which just adds a little, a little extra flavor to the roundabout at the cost of adding a fourth lane to the whole thing. Uh, the bus example will will illustrate it pretty clearly here. If we take a take a bus uh, to this point, you can do it in the right hand turn or the rightmost lane entering here. If you want to go across, you can be in the middle lane. If you want to go left, if you want to net yourself a left hand turn, you can do that on the leftmost lane. And there's no way to turn around using this one as well. Just like the turbo. To reduce conflict and to force traffic to do what you want, there's actually no way to go back the way you came, which to some people is a big problem. To me, I don't mind at all. This configuration is not completely dissimilar to our friend, our controversial friend, the pinwheel roundabout. This is a reversed pinwheel compared to what the last video showed. This is the version that's in the Steam Workshop, but you can see the rightmost lane would be forced to use the rightmost lane to exit. Normal normal stuff, I haven't marked it up, but that's exactly how the super, super turbo works. The left lane would bring you into the roundabout itself, and then you'd be able to go either straight across or net yourself a left-hand turn. And of course, you'd end up yielding at this point. You'd yield, take a look to the left, make sure things are good. Unless you're in the right lane, then you can go all the way and exit, netting yourself a right-hand turn. Everyone, this has been a joy to make. This has been very, very fun, very fun to mark up, uh, very fun to think about lanes and traffic and roundabouts and kind of clear up some of the perceived misconceptions that I think people have based on the pinwheel roundabout video. Uh, let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. Feel free to comment. Of course, feel free to subscribe if you like tutorials like this and City Skylines builds all of that type of stuff. We also have a Discord. Feel free to join up on the Discord if you'd like to have some discussion about City Skylines. And uh, of course, I stream on Twitch twice a week as well. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.